is the distribution. We have the slicer. The slicer distributing one of these three belts, makes a horizontal movement. Once we have complete three, uh, three rows of, uh, mm -hmm. of, uh, of slices, it passes to the second unit, and then we load on the tray. Each one of these trays has an identifier, uh, an RFID tag, in order that we, we know exactly which one is. Uh, and we control the weight in the last one, and we know the raw weight of each one of the trays. Okay. After that, we pass to the second station. The second station is where we really drive. That's this. That's this. Right here. This two units. Yeah. Okay. And we fill one floor of five trays. Okay. You see the bottom. We enter on the bottom. And then it moves one floor forward. One, uh, one step. Okay. Up. Right. In, in this case, there are 25, uh, 25 uh, rows. Okay. Uh, with trays, and the air is orientated passing between this. Uh, these rows. You see there's one piping system in the interior, in the inside. Here is sent through these internal pipes, right? Mm -hmm. It makes the whole turn is redirected to the bottom of the system and it goes up again. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. and what is the, the temperature of the air? Uh, actually, with this, the system allows us for using the highest temperature we can up to the point that the fat is melting. Okay. So the quality of the fat and the size of the fat right. will mark the limit. Okay. In the, in the case of the products you are seeing here in the video, there's some of them that we can go up to 38 uh, centigrades. Okay. Uh, in uh, as salamis or uh, fine ground products, we cannot go over 25, 27. Uh, so it depends on the, on the product. It depends a lot on the product. Okay. It, it depends, the limit is marked by the by the consistency of the fat. Okay. The melting point of the fat. Well, you follow me? Uh, we have made 25 floors right. on the first one. Mm -hmm. Then, once it is in the top uh, in the top floor, it passes to the second unit. The second unit, right? Okay. And the second unit starts to go down, step by step. Yeah. It's not a continuous movement. Huh? It's a making a step by step. And that is to allow for uh, the the temperature to gradually. No, 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 no. We are using uh, normally we, we can do it differently, but we are using the same temperature. Oh. No, it's just we need to arrive to the to the bottom level is to give more time. time. Okay. Okay. If you see in in, in the first one we are entering the right side. Mm -hmm. Here we are entering the air on the other side, the opposite. So you can get better homogeneity between the the two sides. And depending on the product, by the between the time it enters the first chamber and leaves the second is between. Uh, 12, 15 minutes. Yeah, exactly. For example, in this one you see here, it's uh, 30 minutes here, 30 minutes here. Okay. In the case of uh, of a Genoa seven. salami, it can be seven minutes here, seven minutes here. Okay. Uh, it's just a matter of. Uh, of course, when it's seven minutes here, you have this capacity. We need something which goes faster there. Right. The systems are uh, for preparing the trays in less time than this one. Okay. Uh, there are several variations. Uh, what else? Here in between of the two tunnels, we have a scale, uh, we have a system for controlling, we can control the weight in here. Right. Okay. Uh, here is not protected, in the actual machine this is covered. Right. But uh, here we can have an idea on what is the loss in the middle of the process. Okay. So for new products, this gives us a, well, gives an orientation. When you are making a normal, a standard product, you don't need this anymore, so you can you can go uh, all the way through. Okay. No problem. After this, we arrive to the bottom floor. The product here is already finished. Right. It's dried. We pass through this unit. This unit has two two units. From one uh, from one side, uh, it has the mission of in case you need to change. You have a, a, a small. Um, stop on the thermoformer, for example, changing a roll, a uh, plastic roll or something like that, it gives you a certain time to accumulate without stopping. Uh, it's an accumulator. Okay. Uh, the other mission is, this has a, a, a heating exchanging unit here, so you can shield down the product in case you are uh, you're making uh, a modified atmosphere packaging. Okay. If, you are, if you are packaging in the vacuum, 
if you have a product here getting out at 20 degrees, for example, it has no problem. Right. If you have a, if you do the same in um, in a modified atmosphere packaging, you have the risk of having condensation. condensation right. Yeah. Okay. Well. After here, we arrive, we take the last weight here, we know exactly uh, what is the weight of each one of the trays. We arrive to this station, this station there is a, a, a head with a suction cups, one for each slice, mm -hmm. which picks the product and displays it to the, to the top of this belt. Okay. Uh, and then in this belt, what we do, we make a, a movement crossing. You can see here in the screen better now in the video, it's making this operation. On top of the belt, and it starts to form the the package in the size and the dimensions right. that you, you mark, right? And, that is and then here you can have any any kind of package you want. Ah, this is a, this is a particular okay. solution. Uh, you can see a manual unit here. You have any other solution. But how many operators does it take to, to run actually the, the what you need in a normal line like that? It can be. If you have robots, it will be only one person and one person there. Right? So just two. It's one person attending the the, the slicer. You need nothing else. Wow. Okay. It's a uh, very similar to what you need in a standard slicing line. Okay. Right. But it cuts down the, uh, the drying time by many many days. Yeah. Wow. That's, uh,